Hi everyone, and welcome back to Taste the Code. Today on the bench we have a post-mortem analysis of yet another failed bulb. And this one is a bit different than the ones that we've seen before. You can check the video up here, uh, where they use a chip to regulate the current and they drive the LEDs with a constant current. That's why when we had a fault in one of the LEDs, we were able to jump over it. Uh, unfortunately, this one uh, has the same problem. This is the the module that all the LEDs are on. And as you can see on this one, we have a burn mark. And that means that that LED went up in circuit. So no current is flowing through the rest of the LEDs. And this is really a common problem that I keep seeing in uh, many of the LED bulbs that I get that fail. Uh, the construction is really straightforward, so it's an aluminium-backed uh, uh, PCB that's being housed in uh, this aluminium-lined plastic cone. Uh, we have the diffuser on the front, uh, along with the socket and the uh, pin that goes uh, that makes contact with the live wire in the socket. Here on the LED module, we have 17 LEDs. I'm not sure if you can really see these, but we have basically two visible chips on each of the LEDs. The light is branded as OptiLED with the one, and it's a 10 watt LED that works out of 220 to 240 volts. What's interesting about this bulb is the way that uh, they regulate the current and the voltage on the LEDs. So this one, this here is a capacitive dropper and it's very different to uh, from the other LEDs. This one, basically what it does, this capacitor is in uh, in series with the, with the live wire. Actually here is with the neutral, but uh, again, we can switch that. So it's not really um, that uh, strict that it has to be on the live wire, uh, but that one is in series with the AC voltage and it limits the amount of current that can pass through each of the sine wave because those capacitors which are in parallel will charge up and uh, limit some of the AC voltage that's coming in. From there, we have a resistor that goes across them, so they get discharged when they are disconnected and they go through a bridge rectifier uh, that has a smoothing capacitor and another resistor across that capacitor that will uh, prevent any leakage current and will discharge and decisively turn off the, the LED uh, when, it's, when it's turned off. On the input, we have 100 ohms inrush current limit resistor that's also acting as a bit of fuse. But unfortunately, unlike with the other LED, we with this one, we can't just simply reach over this LED because that will increase the, the current that goes through the rest of the LEDs. And that might cause a avalanche effect that now LEDs can start to fail uh, in a circle. And the way that these two boards are mechanically connected is through this slot that exists in the aluminum board. And if we slide in here, we'll see that these two were uh, soldered together with the, with the bridge and that makes connection from the board here, from the positive side to the positive mark on, um, on the LED board. I do have another one of the same brand and same type of LED that still works. So uh, let's plug it in and see how um, how it works. I have this power meter and I've connected the LED bulb to a short lead. And if we connect it, we can see that it draws 10.4 watts uh, with a current of, it's now 236 volts on the AC input and the current is about uh, 86 uh, milliamp with a power factor of 0 0.55. And that's really typical for capacitive dropper like we have here. What we can calculate from this is the actual drop that we have around the LEDs. So let's turn this off. 
and we can also verify that if we connect this to uh, my bench power supply here on the power supply i've limited the current to 20 milliamps and i've set the voltage to 9 volts so we'll see what will be the forward uh, the forward uh, drop of the leds once we connect it with the with the current limit of 20 milliamps so that should be a fairly um good current to run this leds on and if we connect we'll see that it now turns on it draws uh, 20 milliamps and it goes to a voltage of 8.55 uh, volts but the the problem is that we don't really know what are the exact specs of the leds so if we try to run it on a higher current so it will run because we saw with the meter before that they are driven to about 85 milliamps uh, through the circuit so now I've increased the voltage, it's, nine, it's now 9.3 with uh, 60 milliamps and we can see that the LED is now much brighter and it draws half an amp. Uh, we can test all of the LEDs around the circuit and we'll see that all of them work except, except for the one that uh, we have the burnt LED. So we know that that's the issue with the bulb. The way that I'm going to try and fix this is that I will try to remove this LED from here and do some calculation and replace it with uh, with a resistor and we'll see and we'll see how that behaves I'll try to limit the current through the circuit to something more reasonable uh, it will be a much lower wattage uh, LED, but that should make it last forever, basically. Before I start with the desoldering, here is the schematic of the uh, of the bulb. So we have live and neutral coming in from one side on the board, and the live wire goes to a 100 ohm fusible resistor, and it then goes directly to the bridge rectifier, which is unmarked. And on the other side, we have two capacitors in parallel. One is uh, one microfarad and the other one is 680 nanofarads. And we have one mega ohm resistor across those so they can be discharged once it's connected. On the other side, we have the uh, 10 microfarads, 400 volt smoothing capacitor. That's this one here. Uh, that's on the output with the 470 kilo ohm resistor across that. And then it's the uh, series of LEDs. We have 17 chips uh, with what I believe is two LEDs per chip uh, with a total of 34 LEDs. And before we start replacing the LED with the resistor, let's try to do and work out what value of a resistor we will need. So we'll see, we saw that on the working bulb, it draws around 10 watts and those uh, watts are spent by the 17 LEDs. So if we take 10 watts and divide it by 17 LEDs, we get approximately about a half and a uh, half a watt that's being um, dissipated through each of the LEDs. And to get a similar dissipation with the um, bench power supply, uh, we need to take the LED to about 9.2 volt, 9.2 volts and about 60 milliamps through it. And that seems to work just fine and we have a really bright LED. So I think this is similar to what the conditions inside are after the, the dropper. So if we, now um, we saw that we have 9.2 volts and if we multiply that by 17, we get a total of 156.4 volts. And I'll use that as a supply voltage on this online calculator. So because now we have one LED that is not working, we need to deduct the voltage that would be across that LED. So that would be minus 9.2 volts. And we come to a value of approximately 147 volts that we will now have across the LEDs. We need to drop those nine volts across the resistor. 
the current that we want is somewhere in the ballpark of uh, 20 to 30 milliamps so let's try 30 milliamps uh, we'll see that for that we'll require a 300 ohm resistor with power of 0 0.27 watts that's slightly above the the rating of a regular resistor so let's drop this to about 25 still above let's do uh let's do 20 milliamps so that seems okay uh, we have a resistor of 450 ohms with a power of 0 0.18 watts and that should be okay for the bulb and we should get nice brightness of this so i'll go with that and try that um, the closest resistor values that i have to 450 ohms are 360 and 470 ohms and I'll go with 360 because that would give me a current of 25 milliamps and we'll draw we'll drop around um, 0 0.2 watts on the resistor which should technically be fine so I'll go with that So now we have the resistor in there. Theoretically, that should make this bulb work again. Let's assemble the boards together and try it out. Okay, so here's the current setup. I have this connected through some crocodile clips to the live output, which is at the moment not connected. And we'll see now what happens. I'll try it first to see if it works or not. And as you can see, uh, we get light out of the bulb, out of the module now. Uh, let's see how that changed the performance of the bulb. I'll plug this in and disconnect it from here. I'll connect the power meter and then connect this through the power meter and what you know we're exactly at the same output um, let's see what's the current 200 and 386 milliamps so basically that meant that the math that we did was correct and we're basically now using the same output but without that single led we're wasting a bit of power on the uh, resistor but that's not a problem because we now have a working module that we can still use in some of our projects it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up he fucked up okay so after doing a few tests and burning through some resistors, I, as a final decision, I decided to remove one of the capacitors that were in parallel. So I removed the one that was uh, 680 nanofarads, and that dropped the power of the uh, light to 6 watts, which I think will be a much more suitable for... Uh, handling all of the current and we'll still getting uh, a lot of light as you can see here uh, the current now dropped to about 54 milliamps which i think will serve us better in the long, long run and apparently the power of the resistor was not enough so i know after some running time i noticed that there is some burning and this the, the resistor was getting quite warm so Currently, I now have, let's power that off. So at the end, I opted in for two resistors in parallel. Basically, the current was predetermined by the capacitor that uh, um, the maximum that it can draw and it was basically burning through the resistors. Now I have two in parallel to spread the load and I also removed 
one of the capacitor and now I think we have better light for any any future project. Eventually this would still need to be cooled down because it's now missing the uh, the heatsink that it had on the back but uh, I think that this should be good enough light for any future project. I won't be reassembling the light but I keep these modules uh, so I can use them later on in in projects like this one for example and that's about it for today's video i hope that you liked it and you managed to learn how the capacitive dropper works and how these led bulbs are constructed and, uh, and operated and if you like that then be sure to subscribe and leave a comment below if you have any questions and i'll see you all in the next one cheers